Yeah, it should be good. Okay. Monitor camera. Uh, yeah. Okay. Cool. I'd like to bring, uh, thank Brian Martin of Digital Trust uh, for paying for dinner last night, the Hacker Family Dinner. Yeah. Brian has been with us since HackerCom 1. Uh, it wouldn't be HackerCom without him. He's running a really cool uh, lock sport, lock picking contest uh, on, on Sunday. Um, he really is a huge supporter of HackerCon, Hackers for Charity. So without further ado, Brian Martin, thank you. This Brian Martin, not the other yeah. <laughs> Not attrition. And I apologize for my terrible presentations. It's about the information, right? Not about how it looks on the screen. Um, <clears throat> there's a, about the lock picking contest. You haven't seen it yet, uh, but there's a boatload of locks out there. Uh, stuff that you've probably never seen before if you're a lock fanatic. Uh, there's some really rare stuff. Um, we can show you how to open all of them. Uh, not quickly. In some cases, it's just pure lock, lock sport. Um, but there's going to be a contest tomorrow. The person who opens the most locks in the time period wins a front sight firearms training certificate. The person who comes in number two wins some cool stuff too. And please stop by and talk to us about digital trust and what we can do for you. Yay, advertising. Okay. So, since it's early, would anybody like a five-hour energy? Really? Anybody else? Okay. So, we're here today to talk about what's not showing up on my speaker notes. So this, <laughs> it never goes right for me up here. This is awesome. <clears throat> Scaling forensics, how to image a skyscraper. Um, we do forensics, we do e-preservation. So this question comes up on occasion. Can you do an entire building? Well, of course we can. Anybody can, it's just a matter of knowing it. Um, everybody recognize the building? All right, that's it, I'm going home, class over. That's the matrix. Uh, if if Skoda was here, he'd have recognized it. Okay. So we I've been identified. You all knew I am. La di da. Great. Uh, digital trust. What we do. Yay. Okay. So time equals money when we're doing forensics. Um, who here does forensics or preservation? Anybody? Okay. Who here's ever tried to copy a two terabyte hard drive? Takes a while, doesn't it? So when you go in to do e-preservation, which is the collection of digital evidence, um, you have to copy all this stuff. So if they have 10 hard drives, it's going to take you a while to copy them. Time is money. So it's important to be able to do this stuff fast. E-preservation is a buzzword. Um, it actually just comes down to copying all of that electronic stuff. And then if they're paying you, collating it. So, what happens is that lawyers send out a order to preserve, which is a legal bludgeon. They don't understand it, most of them. Uh, Matt's office apparently does, which is impressive because I think uh, I've encountered two law offices that actually understand what it means when they ask for preservation of electronic evidence. Most of them understand that at some point they're going to get a stack of email on paper, and that's e-preservation? No. Uh, the city lawyers, New York, San Francisco, all those kind of places, they understand that when they ask for e-preservation, they're getting the metadata as well. Um, but most lawyers in most places have been to a presentation like this and been told, you need to demand preservation of electronic evidence. But they don't know why. They don't understand what it is they're asking for. And when you hand them a stack of paper, they're perfectly happy. So there's a level of ignorance out there um, in the legal profession when it comes to this stuff that we're trying to correct because e-preservation is a big stick and you can use it to settle cases fast. It's a wonderful weapon for law. <clears throat> so when you ask for e-preservation, it should be painful. That's the objective, is to cause pain for the other side and to find the truth, but mostly to make it difficult so that they'll settle or to find the truth. It depends on which side of this 
alleyway you're on as to what's going on when you ask for it, but you're digging, and digging is always painful. So why image a skyscraper? Anybody remember Enron? The feds come in, they load up all the computers on pallets, on pallet jacks, and then they forklift everything out. It's very messy. You have to be the feds to do stuff like that. If you are in civil litigation, like um, say Adrian has a sex change and it goes badly, so he sues the hospital. No, not in that case. Sues sues the hospital. Um, they want to go and collect all of those computers and things. Well, you can't just take all the computers from a hospital. That would put them out of, well, would disrupt them severely. So how do you get all of the data that you're demanding? Because you have to turn it over. Um, and that's what we're talking about when we're dealing with imaging a skyscraper, is how to do all of that stuff. So the preservation orders roll in, the geeks roll out, you bring the stuff The order, when you're fighting the order, the objective here can be to create doubt. If you can't produce the evidence, um, then the law is going to come down against you. They're going to say that you intentionally didn't provide it, you destroyed it, what have you. Um, that's, it, it, this is one side of the stick, you're beating someone with this to cause doubt so that you can win the case. Uh, I know I'm not my most dynamic. Uh, that's what the five hour energies are for. Guys, it's 10 a.m. You should be awake. Um, so by creating doubt in the legal case, you either you find the evidence and it's complicated enough that you can disrupt the other side. Um, there's different ways to bring the questions about it. But basically, you're sitting down across from each other at a table arguing over whether or not you've got enough evidence, whether or not you've got the right evidence, what it means. And this is why people in our profession are important, because the, lo the lawyers don't understand this stuff. When they ask for computer systems, um, you can hand them a stack of PCs, and they don't know whether that's everything or not. There could be 14 mainframes, and then, God forbid, some cloud data. Uh, it gets complicated fast, and unless you know what you're asking for, um, you can miss a lot, which is why it's important for them to talk to us, because we're the ones that know all the answers to that stuff. Um, the opposite side of the coin is you provide all of that data, the reams and reams and reams and stacks of stuff and you basically dump it on the opposition's desk and say, good luck. That's all the data. Enjoy yourselves. Because a two terabyte drive holds an enormous amount of data. It takes two days to um, basically run a two terabyte drive mm -hmm. through an FDK imaging system, which is one of the tools of choice. Um, that if you're dealing with 10 or 20 computers, that's an enormous amount of time. The way we deal with it is by working in parallel, of course. There's more, more than one technician, more than one PC. It's good stuff. Uh, by creating data, you get victory. Yay. Victory equals money, of course. This is all about money. So uh, don't try this at home. Experts. Um, it's important when the lawyers are bringing us in that you, they, they bring in the right people, that they understand what it is they're looking at. Um, I'm a healthcare guy, right? I know all about healthcare. Uh, I can go into a hospital and dig down through the layers of computers and interfaces to get at the base data. But someone who's not healthcare is going to go in and be like, we want your electronic records. And they're going to turn to their medical record system and go, here. Well, the medical record system in a hospital may be one designated system, but behind that is another 20 medical record systems or 30 medical record systems, all of which may have different data. And unless you know to dig down, you can't get at the right data. This works for every industry. So make sure you've got the right people. If I was going to go out and do um, a mechanical plant or a chemical engineering plant like a, a Lucent Microelectronics, I would go and get somebody that understood how it is shop floor dynamic systems work so that we would get the right data. And it's all about process. OK. So this is what we go through. Figuring out what we want to collect, the actual collection process, preservation, which involves numbering systems and so on, and analysis, which is where the bulk of the work takes place um, for uh, the forensics people, uh, and then contesting the evidence. The collection process can be done by pretty much anybody. It's what we call monkey work. Um, you have to have a certain level of integrity. You have to be callable on the stand uh, in court. 
but it doesn't take a great deal of skill. Um, one of the devices that we use is uh, a little black box, and anybody can be taught to use it. You can still screw it up, but it's kind of hard to screw it up. I've seen it happen, though. It's amazing. Um, so collection is, is what we're talking about today. These, uh, these are some of the ways that we do it. You've got standard imaging, DD, of course, the fallback. Voom hard copy, a big shout out to the guys at Voom. They're the only ones that have ever done me a solid in this business. Um, and the hard copy is my favorite device. It's the little black box I was talking about. Uh, there's the big two forensic people, one of which I already accidentally mentioned. Uh, that won't happen again because they haven't done anything for me lately. Uh, and then there's remote imaging. Um, the guys out of Germany, X-Ways, they have uh, some really cool software that also works really well. Remote, remote imaging is nice, but it has its issues. Um, then there's slicing, pulling data by pieces, and different other pieces. Okay, so what problems do we run into when we're imaging? Because if you're going to go do a skyscraper, you can't screw it up. Once you've touched it, it's contaminated, so you have to get it right the first time. We've all seen PCs that look like this, right? You open it up and there's more crud in there than is in your basement. What we get with this is typically heat problems and disk errors, and that stinks, and it interferes with how you're collecting the evidence. You can DD something with disk errors, but you have to understand what it means and how it's going to turn out once you've done it. And the guys at uh, My Hard Drive Died are wonderful at explaining all of the repercussions of my hard drive is dying and what that means to the legal system. But basically for us, it means you're going to copy it, you're going to check some it, and if you're lucky, you get to check some it again, and hopefully they match. Um, but even if they match, it still could be a problem. Um, so disk errors and understanding the hardware that you're imaging, uh, especially in, in higher-end investigations, can be a significant issue. It takes talent. Um, what talent, which is frankly beyond me. That's why we have people like my hard drive died. Great guy. Um, but for the most part in civil litigation, as long as you can scrape the information off the platter and call it good, that's adequate. You have done your due diligence. You have done your best. That's all that's necessary. So if it doesn't come back and check some again, that's all right. It, this is not a criminal investigation. It's a civil litigation. Um, people are not actively going out and subverting the evidence. So it depends on what the court will accept. Um, problem with going across the network and doing it uh, that way is typically you see a lack of bandwidth. You're going to have to have at least a 100 meg connection. Uh, on a 100 meg connection, it's going to take you four hours to pull across an 80 gig drive. So you can't saturate somebody's backbone to do 100 PCs at the same time because they won't have any bandwidth and you can't get it anyways. Even on a gig network, the most you can achieve is typically three hard drives at one time. So it's going to take a long time to network a sky, or to image a skyscraper across the network. <clears throat> Another problem is uh, security. Have they encrypted the hard drives? How do you deal with the encryption? At what level do you get to deal with the encryption? Um, wonderful issues. The basic function, though, of imaging a hard drive is just copying the binary data. So we don't care if it's encrypted or not. It doesn't matter. Bits are bits. But it can be an issue when you go to read it. And then there's the lovely concept of best evidence. Um, when it comes to criminal investigations and most high-end law, best evidence means you've got to have the original thing. So back to our poor Adrian here. Um, we actually need the hard drives that came out of those computers, not copies of those hard drives, the originals. But for civil litigation, we don't even need that. Best evidence is, again, did you try really hard? Did you do your diligence? All we need is a copy of the hard drive and a statement that says, I copied it at this date and time. That was the checksum. I swear, stack of Bibles, that that's the hard drive. Well, a perfect copy. And then if the data changes on the hard drive, we don't care because we've done what needed to be done. So best evidence varies. This is where legal counsel will tell you what to do. Scheduling can also be a problem. Aside from the bandwidth issues, you're going to show up at somebody's desk and take their computer down. Um, in addition to scheduling, yes, this goes right along with it. When you show up at their desk and ask for their hard drive, they're going to ask you why. So you either have to have a really good excuse or 
better, they're not there. So can you grab it over lunch? Can you grab it at night? Can you grab it on the weekend? We call those um, swoop and scoops. We'll go in Friday after work closes and we'll start working and then we'll wrap up sometime Sunday depending on the size of the building. Joshua and I did one uh, out in Reading a while ago. Loads of fun. Um, something always goes wrong, but if you can avoid employees and you can avoid scheduling, it makes things a little bit easier. Because if they're sitting there watching you do it, they're going to be questioning you the whole time. What is this? And then they're going to go down the hallway and ask their friend, what's going on? You don't need that. Estimating how much all of this is going to take can be fairly complicated. I mean, you know things like, okay, it's going to take four hours to copy a single hard drive, unless it's a large hard drive, and then it'll take 12 hours to copy a hard drive. So you need to know what it is you're getting into. You've got to have some intelligence going in if you're going to make any sort of reasonable estimate. Um, how many, what kind how they want it done, how many different locations, and then if there's going to be any problems. When you've come to find out that they've all got Pentium computers, like P1s, it's going to be a long night. Um, you show up, and this has happened, and they've got IDE drives. I'm like, I IDE? Really? I've got an adapter some built on. I don't know where it is. Or, God forbid, some MFM drives. Um, maybe they have SCSI. Uh, you know how many different types of SCSI there are? There's like eight. I, mean, I can't we keep track of them all, but we've got cards and adapters and everything. But you have to bring all that equipment with you. Uh, unless you're taking the hard drives, the advantage that the feds have. Hey, look, it's ours now. Thanks. <clears throat> Nobody? Come on. All right, we got some chuckles there. Cool. Okay, so what's going on? Practicality. If it's remote, it takes too long. If we send a technician out with a tool, like my little black box, then we need a little black box and a technician for every single copy that we're making. So we're limited in bandwidth by how many black boxes we can send to the job. Plus, those things aren't free. They're like 1500 bucks a pop. Um, actually, we'll talk about cost in just a second. Um, too many techs expensive. But what if we could just use the clever monkeys? I told you, it's not hard to copy a hard drive. Everybody's DD'd. We all know how to do that. So this is why we don't want to use hardware. It's expensive. Really expensive, not quite as expensive. The hard copy, um, uh, other disk duplicators. There's this thing called the Logic Cube. Um, we don't use those, even though they're less expensive. There's a reason why we don't use that, and we'll talk out there if necessary. Um, ironically, the laptop with a copy of Ubuntu, which is perfectly acceptable in every court, is cheap. And then you can go home and play Call of Duty when you're done. So that's... Uh, I like laptops, but there's an even better way to do it with Clever Monkeys. So now to the actual how-to image of skyscraper portion, which is technical. People say, uh, you don't do technical. Finally, we get to do a technical presentation. Come on. What happened? Did we lose net? Well, while that's going on, let me pass these out. Who's going to attempt to follow along or wants a copy of all of the stuff I'm going to tell you to download from the net? Because I only have that many. You sit in front, you get the benefit. Five hour energy. We have got to get these guys to sponsor us. I give away way too many of these at these cons. Are we back? Yes. Okay. So, in order to image a skyscraper, yes? How big? How big is it? It's about four and a half inches, I think. <laughs> um, I think it's 1.4 gigs. It was just too big to fit on a CD. Um, well, we'll get to this whole thing about inventing software. So, you find yourself a client. Somebody who's got a building and a lawsuit. They're being sued. They're suing somebody else. Whatever the case, the weapon comes out, the big stick, and they say, we want all of your evidence. So you've got to collect. There's about an average of 25 to 30 PCs per floor in a typical office building. Ten floors, that's like 300 PCs. This is going to take a while. So how are we going to do it? Well, with our clever monkeys. Love monkeys. 
I have to throw this picture in every single time possible because that's not me. But that's the best picture of me I've ever seen. <laughs> so this is when you, when you hit the building, you go in as a squad, right? But instead of guns, you have hard copies or you have laptops or you have, in our case, what we're going to talk about building. Forgot my musical interlude. Pretend there's Monty Python music playing. Okay, that's enough. That was when I was going to pass out the cookies. All right, so we've got some requirements that we're going to need to talk about. We're going to have to build an environment. We're going to play with this thing called UCK, but by play with, I mean I'm going to tell you that this is when you would play with it. We're not actually going to do that because of time limitations. But feel free on your own laptops to be playing with it while we talk. That's fine. Uh, unpack, do all of this stuff, root to fest, blah, 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 test the ISO. Um, this is the important part. What we're going to do is build boot disks. We're going to go into this building, use our boot disks to copy the hard drives in massive parallel formation using nothing but clever monkeys. Anybody can put a CD in, reboot a computer, and follow instructions. The software that we're going to add to that process is going to be our error checking. That's our proprietary stuff that we tack on to the end of, okay, now you've got a boot ISO. Here's the proprietary portion that says, did they plug in the USB 3 drive? Is it the right drive? What's the serial number on the drive? What's the serial number on the computer? Let's put all of that stuff in a text file and throw it out on the drive so that we know we've got the right computer. Because identification is really important when it comes to evidence. Otherwise, we have nothing. Um, and then you burn them, send them out in the field, and profit. Okay, requirements one. Ubuntu Customation UCK is a live CD. Uh, you can read slides as well as anybody. Um, so I'll just say the UCK is on there. This is the tool that we're using right now. There's a million different ways to do this. It's software. You can use whatever build you want. Um, what's important is that at the end of the day, you've got a boot disk and that it will do what you want it to do. That whole what you want it to do thing is, again, that's the part you get paid for. Because anybody can build a boot disk. Um, you got the, if I'm going too fast on flipping them and you're taking notes, just let me know. The mini remix, uh, minimal set of software because we want it to fit on a CD. Why a CD? Why not a DVD? Because not all computers have DVDs. Actually, not all computers have CDs. But just know the environment that you're about to go image so that you know what kind of tool to bring. You could throw this on a USB stick. Um, worst case scenario, you could put it on a hard drive and connect a hard drive, which would really stink. But you could still do it with PC technicians as opposed to forensic people. PC tech, $45 an hour. Forensic tech, two to $300 an hour. Get your remix downloading. And then the VMware player, of course, all we, we, we're VMware player, it's the only choice. I mean, you can play around with the other stuff, but VMware is the cat's meow when it comes to virtualization. <clears throat> There's all your commands. I'm sure we'll be throwing these slides out on the net somewhere if you want to go back and look these things up later. Um, going to your stuff. And if you follow all of these instructions, oops, not double click. You will end up with a boot CD. Okay, so initializing stage one, putting it all together. You have to install this stuff. I don't off the top of my head know how long it takes to install a lot of this stuff, but probably not fast enough that we can do it right now. Um, install, download, and release that thing. Okay, the important parts. Go get your stable packages. Um, updates. If you don't update, you're obviously not on the latest edition of what we would like to have. People use old software all the time, but it's one of those things when you get to court that they can attack you with about your evidence. You know, what version are you on? Oh, that's an older version. How come you're not using the newer version? And then it just draws things out. It's a lot easier to just be like, nope, we're on the latest. Here's the version. This is why we used it. If you've got a rationale for why you had it, as opposed to, well, we built this and it's expensive to change it and we don't want to update it, that's not going to work out well for you in the long run. Um, or you can do the Debian. Come on. Okay, different up commands. This is pretty much everything you need to know. Um, pack, unpack, update. Very simple for all Linux people, pretty much. Blue eyes. 
Come on. Okay, unpacking it. Here's your unpacking instructions. Remaster clean uh, to clean things up. Um, every time you remaster and clean it, everything that you put in there will go away, so be careful. You've got to understand how this stuff plays. Um, it's not like you can just whip this out at a client site one day and go, let's do it this way. Trust me, you're going to want to play with this for a while before you make it production. Unpack the temp, um, remastering, unpacking, and now you're in the root and you can do all kinds of stuff. It's basically customizing a Linux image. Okay. Uh, default directories. I mean, this is actually this is really boring stuff, right? It is. We're talking. It's a boot CD. Install the packages for whatever it is you want. If you're going to do a network collection, you're going to put obviously more networking stuff in there. If you're going to have some weird language that you're using, like I don't know Python, you're going to want the Python packages installed so that it'll translate. Um, whatever tools you're using. If you have some weird need for a C shell, put the C shell in there. Whatever it is, you're, it's your custom environment, your build. It's going to do whatever it is you want it to do. Ours is really simple. Um, we're just shell and Python and then the various commands like dd and so on. Um, change your files that are doing the heavy lifting, which is, again, that thing that starts up when you put it in a boot. Great, you've got a Linux image. But the objective here is to copy stuff. It's not going to copy by itself. You have to tell it to do that. Building the programs to record all of the data that you need, the identification information. There are commands to do that. You don't have to write C code but you have to go out and find out what those commands are. Please tell me what your processor ID is. Please tell me what your hard disk ID is. And you've got to record all of that. And then you can go, did the technician remember to con connect the hard drive? Yes, he did. Do we have enough space? Yes, we do. Okay, now commence the DD operation and then the checksum operation. It's not terribly difficult, but it did take us a while to develop pieces of it, so uh, we're not just going to give that one away. But it's, if you're in the business, you can do it. You guys are very competent. Um, billables from the terminal, copy files directories, yes. Okay, so now we're copying the hard drive. Yay. Uh, once the changes are all made, exit, remaster, pack, uh, pack ISO, and presto, you've got an ISO file. Burn it to CD, or run it into VMware player to check and see if it works. No rocket science. ISO, 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 yes, okay, we're booting, great. If you need help for any of this stuff, it's all online. There's plenty of stuff here. Um, how to use VMware, how to customize live CDs. This is not rocket science. DCFLDD is what we're using now, not DD. Uh, Smartmon tools, HD Parm. One of those little things I was talking about, how to dump the hard drive parameters so you can identify the hard drive. Not important. But notably, that comes from SourceForge. I would rather have custom software that I can testify about in court as opposed to something open source when it comes to talking about the identification of hardware. But it's the same thing. <clears throat> so if you need help imaging a skyscraper, this is how you do it. You get a bunch of monkeys, a bunch of boot CDs, a bunch of USB 3 drives, and you unleash them on the building. And then Four guys can do one floor in one night. Four guys, 24 computers, one night. Unless they're big hard drives. Know your environment. Send more guys, send more hardware. This is way cheaper and more effective than doing it any other way. Questions? Five hour energy? For the five hour or the question? All right, what are we on time-wise? Cool. We have that lock display out there with all those locks, lots and lots and lots of locks. So I guess it's break time. Come out and take a look at the locks. Adrian. Oh, I almost forgot. We also have T-shirts. Who will fight each other?